And hi again, everybody. We're in the Cobb TV studios with uh, Chairman Mike Boyce once again. And Chairman, it's November. The uh, trees wow. are finally changing. The days are getting shorter. But uh, when it comes to the work of the commission, the days are not getting shorter. Uh, the, the, the job and the commitments are relentless. That's true. Yeah, and we just came back uh, from a retreat mm -hmm. uh, of which uh, you characterized to me afterwards. A lot of things were accomplished. Yes, I was, um, I was very pleased by the result of the retreat. Uh, what I was trying to, what, the outcome that I was looking for is what I, what, we, what I got, and that was for the commissioners to give me some sort of guidance about how, uh, what kind of budget they wanted me to construct for 2019. And because of the way that the retreat was shaped and because of the work that went, the preparation went into doing it, uh, and the moderators we had from, a, uh, from our uh, Association of County Commissioners, they led us down a path, kept us on the road every now and then, you know, we'd go off on a sidebar and they'd bring us back. But they knew when to step in, they knew when to step out. At the end of the day, uh, I think that we have the broad outlines for how we're going to address the 2019 issues and uh, the, the primary one being, of course, the $30 million deficit. Right. And you had pointed out to me that this is unprecedented in this county and right. obviously very early in the process. Yes. Uh, as I keep uh, telling uh, my friends, that in the old days, we would drop the budget on the lap of the commissioners sometime around July, and then they'd have the work through the summer to, uh, to come up with the budget. What we've done now is we've started that process in October, early November, so we're actually uh, eight or nine months ahead of the, pro of the schedule. That allows us now to, take, to have time to develop this budget, uh, shape it, give us some definition, look at all the numbers that are in the, the rough budget that I have right now and make sure those numbers are valid come back to the board, discuss it, reshape it, and then take this uh, product on the road to the public and show them what we think we, well, we can do for them in 2019. We get input from the public, we come back, we reshape it again, and that way by July, you know, we pretty much should have a done, a done product. When you go on the road, what, what do you think you're gonna be able to show the people of this county about what we're dealing with? Well, I think, um, I think there's a couple of things that come out of this process. First of all, they're getting an appreciation for how hard the members of the board are working to try and uh, use their tax money uh, carefully and fiscally, responsibly. The second thing is, is that we're now going to be bringing them into the conversation. Look, this, this $30 million deficit didn't, didn't get here overnight. Um, but I also realize is that this is our opportunity because they are busy, one of the few times that they can really have an extended conversation uh, about this product that we call the budget. And we hear, we hear them and they hear us, and hopefully somewhere in there we find the middle ground to, uh, you know, to, uh, to move forward on. But the bottom line is, the last thing I, I need to uh, emphasize is that this is one of those times when we as commissioners have to make a hard call. We realize that the $30 million hole is not gonna be, is not gonna be met solely with cutting services. We have, all, we have an option for that, uh, but the services that we would have to cut would be, would be monumental and uh, be very controversial. And I don't think anybody should, uh, should kid themselves. We could close every library, close every senior center in Cobb County, and we would close about half the gap of this $30 million deficit. This is a, this is a big job, and we have to have different ways to approach this. And we have to show the uh, public that we've turned over every leaf in, in an effort to meet this uh, challenge but also to keep and maintain the services they've come to expect. When you talk about those tough decisions, one of the things the uh, board's been really having a hard time debating mm -hmm. is the nonprofits. Sure, we have right. groups out there that provide services yes, for the county, do. that mm -hmm. get taxpayers' money, right. and that can do some of those services better than we ever could. Right. Um, but it's tough trying to keep them in the budget. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I've been getting some emails already about that on both sides. I think Mayor Tumlin uh, had a great quote in the paper earlier this week uh, about the importance of nonprofits and what they bring to the county. Maybe that very line is that they provide services that uh, keep the social network intact. And what I, what I saw when I came to office was is that I thought it was time <clears throat> to take a fresh look at the nonprofits. But I wanted to do this in a fair way, which is why originally my plan was not to change the criteria for the nonprofits until 2019. 
but uh, uh, events overcame me, and so I had to move this timetable up significantly, which is why uh, we did what we did at the board. There are two major organizations that have collectively taken the responsibility of vetting the nonprofits uh, and then bringing them to the board for us to vote on and to fund. The collaborative and their applications uh, start in the summer and they approve them so they can start their programs in, in October. And then we have the uh, community impact funds which they start their application process in January and they elect to come to us for funding later in the spring. And because this process was accelerated uh, I went to the board and said I thought it was unfair that we would ask the collaborative to meet the new criteria because it didn't give them time to adjust. And I realized that many people uh, might disagree with that position, but again, you can't give your word formally or informally to an organization, have them react to that, and then change the rules later in the game where it adversely impacts on them. So what we did was we did a compromise. We agreed to bring the collaborative programs forward uh, for a vote on November 14th, uh, and then for the community impact, but they would still you know, be, be uh, applying under the old criteria, but the community impact funds would be applying next, next year under the new criteria. But the bottom line is what I emphasize everybody is that every one of these programs is vetted. We do not just give money to people because they want it. Uh, it goes through a very rigorous process. Every one of these programs has to meet criteria on both sides. And uh, I think that they've done a great job in the past. But again, uh, we need to make sure that if we are providing funds, public funds, taxpayer funds, to private organizations, they have to be doing things that we as a county should be doing, but they can do it better than we are. And along those lines, we heard long presentations from them about sure. what they do. And we could talk about it for a half an hour or more right. uh, on this program. We but could. in general, how would you tell the taxpayers of this county about what they do and what benefit they provide for for the taxpayers. I, I think what they do is that you know this this uh, there's a lot this is a large county there's 740 thousand people here and we have a lot of things that go on that are outside the eye of the public that because these uh, these nonprofits do their job so well and there's some that are that are well known in the area United Way Must Ministries I, I could the list that I would give you would be names that you'd recognize and what happens is they provide a service that I, what I call leads to and maintaining the social harmony of Cobb County. The reason, you know, I think it's important that this county does not suffer a lot of the same issues that counties have throughout the United States that you're seeing in the news, all right? And I don't want to be specific, but I think you get my point. We, we generally get along well in this county, but that's because many different parts of this county work together to maintain that social harmony and, and, and uh, connect that social network that we need, that safety network we need here for people that are the least and the lost and have had experiences in life that, believe it or not, sometimes of their foot for the grace of God, you might experience, but you have not. And we should not be uh, unmindful of those because if we didn't address this element of the population, we would eventually be servicing them anyhow because many of them would end up in jail, all right, or they'd end up in, in other social programs where we would still have to foot the bill. So what they do for us is that they get ahead of this they provide the services, which means in the long term, they're saving us money. And as, a, as one of the organizations said, that for every dollar that we give them, they leverage it into $3, which means that's $3 I don't have to take out of the county general fund to service that requirement. Right. And I, I was down with you and the uh, board at the retreat, and after spending two days of really just narrowing down into some of the right. uh, intricacies of the budget, it's easy to come out of there not depressed, but, you know, looking at the huge <laughs> job ahead of you. But as you and I have talked, if, if we look not too far away, we're really not in bad shape. No, we're not. And that's, and that's, for, that's for many of you. First of all, uh, I once want, again, to commend this board. Uh, you know, there's a lot of chemistry that goes on in the board between members. They all uh, actively are passionate for their districts, and they obviously all have programs they want to support. But I just get, a, I just get this sense of this board that, Look, despite our differences sometimes, we're going to move ahead and find a way to do this. Secondly, we live in a county that uh, is actually involved in this government, and, they, and they're very clear to tell us, you know, hey, this is what we think about that. So there are a lot of good things happening here, and what we've done here is we, we've just used a whole new forum to lay, lay all our cards out, as, as, I, uh, as I tell people. And the danger of that, of course, is that that gives more targets for people to yell at. 
and the nonprofits was the most obvious example. One, last month it was the library, but that's the, that's the price you pay for open and transparent government. And we as commissioners have to be willing to, uh, you know, be willing to take that criticism or those constructive uh, 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 ideas and meld them together and move it forward and show the people that we hear them and we're going to give them a product that's going to be in their best interest. Right. Not, not too far away from here, they're talking about having trouble even funding their schools yes. in the near term. You know, I, 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 last summer when we were going through the millage rate, it was one of those learning opportunities for me to see how things work together in the state of Georgia as well as the county. And I emphasized during the millage rate that we had to pass the millage rate, all right? Uh, and we had to approve the assessments that went with it. Because if we did not do that, uh, then the state would, would become actively involved and basically uh, tell us, hey, look, you got to get your act together. If you don't, there's going to be consequences. And uh, I think if you read the newspaper, our, our friends next door at Fulton County are going through that right now because they did not pass an assessment uh, that the state approved, and that's something I didn't, wasn't aware of, is that the Department of Revenue has to approve your tax digest. And if they do not approve it, then we can't collect taxes. And more importantly, uh, or just as importantly, neither can the school district. There are, there are manifold consequences for not making the hard call about the tax digest. And I think that we have a great example right now of why this board, you know, last, last summer very courageously recognized that. And even though they didn't agree with the millage rate that I was proposing, what people uh, think should be mindful of is that we reconsidered that motion and came right back with another millage rate and passed that. That allowed us to, con to collect taxes and meet the state requirements. So uh, we are also, uh, you know, we're not, we're not a, an island by ourselves. There are a lot of uh, entities over, overseeing us. And I just think that it's important to, that we do not have the issues that other counties have around here because we have a board that recognizes responsibilities and steps up to the plate. And one message I get from you is that as we go into the holidays, it's going to be a pretty hard working holiday it um, is. for right. us here at Cobb County. My, my plan right now is, is I want to have the, the rough product that we, we delivered at the retreat to have that before the board at the end of the month at our working session so I can move forward and start putting together uh, the product that I'm going to take out to the public after New Year's. And when you want to find out more about taking it out to the public or keep abreast of the developments that will be going on in the next few weeks, follow us, Cobb County Government, on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram as well. And we'll be back next week with more about what's going on in the county with Chairman Mike Boyce. Okay, thank you. Good to be back.